Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, today topic is selfsis, which is very lengthy topic, uh, or it needs to cover more than 100 slides, but I summarize it in 20 or 22 slides. Uh, the reason of presentation is that uh, there is a new guidelines for the management of uh, sepsis and septic shock. Uh, um, it was published a new article by a surviving sepsis campaign 2021-2022. Uh, for that reason, I prepared this presentation and before the, uh, um, to go to the presentation, a uh, brief introduction of sepsis will be uh, presented. Okay. Introduction, sepsis is a clinical syndrome that has physiologic, biological, and biochemical abnormalities caused by a dysregulated host response to infection. Sepsis and inflammatory response that causes, that ensues can lead to multiple organ dysfunction syndrome in death. A retrospective analysis of international database reported a global incidence of 437 per 1 lakh person per year. Uh, in 1995 to 2015, although this rate was not uh, reflective of contribution from low and middle income countries, uh, in 2017, 48.9 million incidence cases of sepsis were reported. Approximately 11 million uh, deaths were reported, 19.7 represent of all global deaths due to sepsis. Incidence of sepsis varies among the different racial and uh, ethnic groups, but appears to be high among African American males. The incidence of sepsis will be more in winter season uh, because the increased prevalence of infection. There are some definitions uh, uh, because of the uh, some terminology uh, which are used uh, in uh, in respect of sepsis. Uh, the according to 1991 International Consensus Conference of Sepsis, uh, they were the definition in some other terminologies which were related to sepsis. Uh, so, for a brief uh, introduction. Uh, there, are, there is one uh, um, terminology, SIR, Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. The condition that is characterized by signs of systemic inflammation like fever, leukocytosis, which is called SIR. Uh, now, SIR is because of infection, because of other causes. Sepsis definition, two or more criteria of SIR with infection is called sepsis. Severe sepsis, when sepsis is accompanied by dysfunction in one or more vital organs or an elevated blood lactate level more than four millimole per liter is called severe sepsis. Septic shock. When severe sepsis is accompanied by hypotension that is refractory to volume infusion, it is called septic shock. Multi-organ dysfunction. Inflammatory injury involving more than one vital organ is called multi-organ dysfunction. Multi-organ Failure, the subsequent failure of more than one organ system is called multi-organ failure. The criteria of SIR, systemic inflammatory response syndrome, there are four criteria parameters. Two or more are present in a suspected infection, the patient will be labeled as sepsis. Those four criterion, criteria are temperature 38 or less than 36, heart rate more than 90, Respiratory rate more than 20 beats per minute, or carbon dioxide level is less than 32 mm of mercury. WBC count 12,000 or uh, less than 4,000. Or there is, when there is 10% M mature neutrophils band forms, the two or more of these parameters are present in a suspected infection person, uh, in a patient which is suspected as infection, infectious. The, that person will be labeled as sepsis. This is definition is according to 1991, but these in, uh, definitions are changed in 1916. And the other international conference was being held in 2001, and they continued the same definition, but there were little bit changes as well. So the new uh, definition of sepsis uh, 
was uh, uh, published by uh, Surviving Sepsis Campaign, Society of American, uh, Society of Critical Care Medicine of America, and European Society of Intensive Care in 2016. Uh, other definitions uh, which, uh, which are also related to sepsis, you know, early sepsis, when we will able to decide that this patient is uh, uh, at, the, at the beginning or in the initial stage of sepsis, there is no definite definition for early sepsis, but infection in bacteremia may be early forms of infection that can progress to sepsis. However, there is no formal definition for early sepsis. Infection in bacteremia, it's very easy and just for the uh, refreshment of your knowledge, all patients which infection, uh, with infection or bacteri bacteremia are at risk of developing sepsis and represent early phases in the continuum of sepsis severity. Infection, it, 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 it is defined as the invasion of normally sterile tissue by organism resulting in infectious pathology. Bacteremia is the presence of viable bacteria in blood. Uh, now, uh, the definition of sepsis according to 2016 International Consensus Conference Sepsis 3. It is called Sepsis 3. The conference which was held in 1991, that was Sepsis 1. In 2001, that was Sepsis 2. In 2016, this is Sepsis 3. So according to these uh, um, uh, sepsis criteria uh, and uh, according to this conference, uh, the definition of sepsis is life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by a dysregulated host response to infection. Organ dysfunction increase in the SOFA score two or more. Now the SOFA score will be below of the presentation. Uh, septic shock, vasopressors to maintain a mean RTL pressure 65 or more, and lactate level is 2 millimole, more than 2 millimole in the absence of hypovolemia. In previous definition, it was 4 millimole. Here it is 2 millimole. SOFA parameters, SOFA means sequential organ failure assessment. This uh, um, uh, SOFA score has six parameters, and total score of this SOFA is 24. If the score is 5 to 6, the mortality rate will be 10%. If it is 7 to 9, the mortality rate will be 15 to 30. And so on, when the, uh, this score is 15 to 24, the mortality score uh, uh, rate will be more than 80%. Uh, so this is very important to, to assess the patient according to SOFA parameter score. Uh, these parameters are respiratory. Uh, PF ratio, we will be, because uh, I will share the full articles and all detail will be present over there. Uh, so PF ratio, there will be three or four uh, number for this score. Hematology platelet count will be observed. Liver serum, renal, renal serum creatinine level or urine output, brain glasgocoma scale. Uh, now Q so far is also the component of uh, the uh, 2016 definition according to definition of sepsis, it is called quick SOFA organ failure assessment. It is very easy to calculate since uh, it only has three components, each of which are readily and identifiable on bedside. Number one, respiratory rate is 22 or more. Altered mentation means patient GCS is 15 or less than 15. And systolic blood pressure 100 or less than 100. If two or more of this score is present, it indicates that the patient, uh, the patient has potential risk, uh, risk, from, uh, risk of death from sepsis. Uh, it indicates this one. And the second, you know, this also indicates the prognosis. If the score is two or more, the prognosis will be not good. Uh, so uh, this is also important and we can assess the patient even in outside of hospital, in emergency department, in ward, in also in ICU. There is another um, score, which is news, National Early Warning Score, is an aggregate scoring system derived from six physiologic parameters. Oxygen saturation, systolic blood pressure, pulse rate, level of consciousness, or new confusion, temperature. Score of six or more, the, it will indicate that the uh, 
Uh, there are three uh, basically um, uh, level for the score, low risk, medium risk, and high risk. When the score is zero to four, the, there is low risk, means that the patient, uh, manage, for the management of patient, the response will be on ward basis, and the patient will be managed inside the ward. And if the score is five to six, it is medium risk, means the patient needs urgent response. And if the score is seven or more, it me means that patient needs uh, emergency response. And this will be, patient will be managed in emergency department and will be admitted in ICU. So these all three parameters to so far new in SERS. They all are recommended uh, according to the uh, new international guideline, which will be presented uh, later on. This factor for sepsis. <clears throat> Intensive care unit admission, bacteremia, advanced age, 65 or above, immunosuppression, diabetes and obesity, cancer, community acquired pneumonia, previous hospitalization, genetic factors, severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2. Uh, clinical presentation, sign and symptom of specific infectious uh, source, arterial hypertension, systolic blood pressure less than 90, MAP less than 70, and systolic blood pressure decrease more than 40% or less than two standard deviation below normal for age. Temperature 38.3 or 36, less than 36. Heart rate more than 90. Tachy tachypnea and respiratory rate more than 20. Signs of organ perfusion, sign of organ perfusion, you all know, uh, the capillary different time will be increased and uh, there will be skin mottling and the extremities will be cold, uh, urine output will be reduced, altered sensorium, heart rate increases, all of the sign of uh, organ perfusion. Uh, warm flesh skin, altered mental status of tendition, restlessness in oliguria, in urea, alias or absent of ball sound. These all are clinical presentation of sepsis. Layer findings, leukocytosis more than 12,000 or less than 4,000. Normal WBC count will be greater than 10% in mature forms. Agar WBC count normal B head to a mature cell will be 10% or more. Hyperglycemia more than 140 milligram per decibiter. Plasma capillary refill, sorry, plasma CRP protein, uh, C reactive protein, more than two standard deviation above the normal value. Arterial hypoxemia less than 300 PF ratio. Acute oliguria, less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour for at least two hours despite fluid resuscitation. Retinine increase more than 0.5 milligram per deciliter. Coagulation abnormalities, INR more than 1.5 or APTT more than 60 seconds. Thrombocytopenia less than one lakh hyperbilirubinemia, more than four gram, adrenal insufficiency, hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, euthyroid sick syndrome, hyperleptitemia, uh, plasma procalcitonin, more than two standard deviation above the normal value. Mid-regional proadrenomedulin has been used to predict occurrence and worsening of organ failure. This is a new parameter and the protein test, uh, I don't know, it will be uh, done in Pakistan or no, but this is a new one. We can also assess the uh, sepsis based on this uh, uh, routine. Prognosis. Sepsis has a high mortality rate that appears to decreasing to be decreasing. Estimates range from 10 to 52 percent with rates increasing linearly according to disease severity of sepsis. Following discharge from the hospital, sepsis carries an increased risk of death as well as an increased risk of further sepsis in recurrent hospital admissions. Poor prognosis factors, prognostic factors include the inability to mount a fever, leukopenia, age more than 40 years, certain comorbidities, AIDS, hepatic, uh, hepatic failure, cirrhosis, cancer, alcohol dependence, immunosuppression, a non-urinary source of infection, a nosocomial source of infection in any of all these uh, things are, you know, uh, which, which are present in a patient, the prognosis will be poor. Immediate evaluation and management. This 
four things, you know, very important immediately when a patient comes in emergency department. First of all, securing of the airway, if indicated, stabilization, respiration, establish venous access, initial investigation. Now, this is that, uh, you know, the recommendation which was uh, presented by sepsis, uh, by surviving sepsis campaign, 2021-2022. It was published in November 2021 and reviewed in 2022 April. So these recommendations are the current management for the sepsis and septic shock. Um, there are many uh, other recommendations as well. The full article I will share in the group. So here I only, you know, I uh, will discuss uh, with you only 25 or 26. It is not recommended to use Q so far compared with SIR, NEWS, or MUSE as a single screening tool for sepsis or septic shock. The second is not MUSE, this is MUSE, modified early warning score. Uh, modified means the six, uh, out of six parameters, oxygen saturation has been removed. So that converted from national early warning to modified early warning score. For adults suspected of sepsis, it is suggested to measure blood lactate. Sepsis and septic shock are medical emergencies. It is recommended to start treatment and resuscitation immediately. For patients with sepsis induced hypoperfusion or septic shock, we suggest that at least 30 ml per kg of IV crystalloid fluid should be given within the first three hours of resuscitation. Use dynamic measures to guide fluid resuscitation over examination or static parameters alone. Dynamic measures like uh, pulse pressure variation, uh, stroke volume variation, IVC collapsibility index, and uh, there are uh, some other, for example, um, um, uh, this um, stroke volume and uh, cardiac output. Suggested to guide resuscitation to decrease serum lactate in patients with elevated lactate level. In adults with septic shock, use capillary refill time to guide resuscitation as an adjunct to other measures of perfusion. Are you following me, sir? Hello? Yes, sir. I hope, I hope sleep will not interfere in our communication, okay? Uh, in adults with septic shock, use capillary refill time to guide resuscitation as an adjunct to other measures of perfusion. On adults with vasopressors, initial target of mean arterial pressure of 65 over higher MAP. There are two studies, you know, they compared the two groups of patients. In one group, they, they, they kept MAP uh, between 60 to 70, other group was 75 to 85. The people whose map was above, they got more mortality and ICU stay was prolonged and because of cardiac arrhythmias and especially atrial fibrillation. So now the new recommendation map should be kept between 60 to 70. It is recommended to admit patients who require ICU admission in ICU within six hours. If it is delayed, the mortality rate will be increased. In case of unconfirmed infection, continuously re-evaluate for alternative diagnosis in discontinued empirical antimicrobials if an alternative cause of illness is found or strongly suspected. In case of high likelihood of sepsis, administrator, ad, administrator antimicrobials immediately. Ideally, within one hour of recognition. Basically, uh, uh, there is one algorithm according to the um, article. When there is a uh, uh, sepsis is definite or probable, uh, the antibiotic should be started within one hour. Either there is shock or uh, without shock. If the sepsis is uh, possible, it is not confirmed. So if the sepsis is with shock, the antibiotic should be started within one hour, otherwise it will be started within three hours. In case of low likelihood of infection without shock, it is suggested to defer antimicrobials while continuing to closely monitor the patient. When suspected sepsis or septic shock, 
it is suggested against using procalcitonin plus clinical evaluation to decide when to start antimicrobials as compared to clinical evaluation alone. There is no difference. You know, procalcitonin has no role to, uh, for the initiation of antibiotics, but it has role to stop or to de-escalate the antibiotics, specifically in community-acquired pneumonia and nosocomial pneumonia. In the high case of MRSA, it is recommended to use empiric antimicrobials with MRSA coverage. At low likelihood of MRSA, it is recommended to use empiric antimicrobials without MRSA coverage. So there are risk factors for MRSA, you all know. Those risk factors, for example, there is history of 90 days hospitalization, previous history of antibiotic intake for the last 90 days, patient is immunocompromised, patient has corona positive colonization test of MRSA, patient has cancer of uh, taking immunosuppressant drug like steroid. So if there are risk factors, so it will be highly likelihood. If there is no risk of uh, MRSA, it will be low likelihood. In case of shock and high risk multi-drug resistant organism used to antimicrobials with gram negative coverage. In high risk of fungal infection, use empiric antifungal therapy. Fungal infection, high risk mean number one, one, one is very important when there is neutropenia and patient has fever and the patient has been given antibiotics for four to seven days and patient is not improving clinically. So it is necessary to start antifungal empirical therapy. There are other risk factors for fungal, as I mentioned for MRSA, cancer, immunosuppression, neutropenia, diabetes mellitus, high age, more than 65, obesity, and prolonged stay in ICU, prolonged uh, um, administration of antibiotics. And all these, when the patient is not improving, along with the um, broad spectrum antibiotics, the antifungal therapy should be started. According to this guideline, uh, echinocandin is drug of choice for candida, and voriconazole is drug of choice for aspergillosis. There are no recommendations for antiviral agents. It is suggested to use prolonged infusion of beta lactams for maintenance after initial bolus over conventional bolus infusion. For only, this is, you know, this suggestion is for only beta lactam. It should be given in continuous infusion to maintain the therapeutic uh, volume and the therapeutic level persistently. It is recommended to optimize dosing strategies of antimicrobial based on accepted pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic principles and specific drug properties. Is a specific table here, articles under. I will share them with you. You will see that I have this presentation to prevent the lengthy hone. I have made a slide. It is a beautiful table. है. उसके अंदर ही मेंशन है कि एंटीबायोटिक फार्माकोकाइनेटिक और फार्माकोडायनामिक प्रिंसिपल्स की बुनियाद पर कितने दिन के लिए कौन से एंटीबायोटिक देने होते हैं इट इज रिकमेंडेड टू रैपिडली आइडेंटिफाई और एक्सप्लोर द स्पेसिफिक एनाटॉमिकल डायग्नोसिस ऑफ इंफेक्शन दैट रिक्वायर्ड एमरजेंट सोर्स ऑफ कंट्रोल एंड इंप्लीमेंट एनी रिक्वायर्ड सोर्स कंट्रोल इंटरवेंशन एज़ सुन एज़ पॉसिबल इफ इट इज सोर्स ऑफ कंट्रोल of infection, source of infection, it should be controlled. For example, when there is cholingitis, obstructive jaundice, and patient is sepsis, that obstruction should be released. For example, when there is abdominal abscess or there is another empyema, this will be you know, drained. Otherwise, the antibiotic will not uh, um, play a critical role. Uh, or it, uh, this uh, source of control should be done in six to 12 hours. It should not be delayed. It is suggested to do daily assessment for de-escalation of antimicrobials over using fixed duration of therapy. It is very important point because we are using antibiotic, you know, uh, very carelessly, carelessly, you know, in all the countries, not in our hospital, in Shifa even. Uh, so uh, uh, daily uh, assessment of de-escalation is very important uh, uh, rather to, to give the antibiotics in fixed duration, you know. For adults with an initial diagnosis of sepsis or septic shock, an adequate source control where optimal duration of therapy is unclear, 
we suggest using procalcitonin in clinical evaluation to decide when to discontinue antimicrobials over clinical evaluation or not. I told you previously, procalcitonin is not important for the initiation of antibiotics, but it is important for the discontinuation of the antibiotics. Recommendation for hemodynamics. These are the same recommendations which were published in 2021, November, in review in April 2022 recommended to use crystallized as first line fluid for resuscitation. Use balanced crystallized instead of normal saline for resuscitation, like ringer lactate, half saline with bicarbonate. Use albumin in patient who have received large volume of crystallites. It is recommended against using starches or gelatin for resuscitation. In case of septic shock, it is recommended to use norepinephrine as a first line agent. In patient with septic shock on norepinephrine with, adequate, with inadequate mean arterial pressure that is less than 60 or less than 65, it is suggested to aid with depressin instead of uh, escalating norepinephrine dose. We are, some people, they are doing, you know, increasing the dose. Previously, it was like that. We are increasing the dose of norepinephrine at the maximum. Then we are adding other vasopressin. But the new recommendation to, it is better to start a vasopressin uh, instead of uh, escalating the norepinephrine dose. In case of inadequate main arterial pressure, despite norepinephrine and vasopressin, aid epinephrine, not phenylephrine. In case of septic shock, do, do not use terlipressin. In adults with septic shock and cardiac dysfunction with hypoperfusion, despite adequate volume status and arterial blood pressure, it is suggested to either aid to glutamine, to norepinephrine, or using epinephrine alone. And suggested against using levosimendan. Levosimendan is a new inotropic agent which is used in cardiac failure as an anotropic uh, support. Uh, it basically act on the uh, troponin C, the contractile um, apparatus, and uh, it, it increases the sensitivity of uh, troponin C against uh, for the calcium and increase cardiac contractility, contractility and uh, causes uh, vasodilation. So it will not be given in sepsis and septic shock. In septic shock, it is recommended to use invasive monitoring of arterial blood pressure. It is suggested to start with the pressures peripherally to restore mean arterial pressure rather than delaying initiation until central venous access is secured. There is limited evidence to make a recommendation on use of restrictive versus liberal fluid strategies in the first 24 hours of resuscitation in patients with sepsis and septic shock who still have sign of hypoperfusion and volume depletion after initiation of resuscitation. Monitoring, you know, to, to monitor the response of antibi uh, 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 management of sepsis, these three parameters, you know, hemodynamics, laboratory, and source of control should be assessed. For most patients with sepsis and septic shock, we recommend the fluid management by guiding using clinical targets, including mean arterial pressure 60 to 70 and urine output 0.5 or more per kg per hour. Hemodynamics. In addition, while dynamic measures of fluid responsiveness, respiratory changes in the radial artery pulse pressure, which is called pulse pressure variation, are preferred. Static measures of determining adequacy of fluid administration, central venous pressure 8 to 12, or central venous oxygen saturation 70 or more, may be more readily available. So we basically do dynamic parameter are better than static parameter, but we can use both of them to monitor the response of uh, uh, septic and sepsis shock management. Dynamic, you know, parameters are uh, pulse pressure variation, stroke volume variation, uh, inferior Vanekeva collapsibility index, and uh, static variation, you know, parameters are central venous pressure, and central venous oxygen saturation more than 70, urine output, heart rate, and blood pressure. These all are, you know, static measures for the response of uh, visopressor in fluid resuscitation. 
laboratory serum lactate should be followed uh, every six hours until there is definitive clinical response. It is prudent that other measures of overall response to infection all should be followed. Routine laboratory studies, arterial blood gases, microbiology study. Source control. Following initial investigation in empiric antimicrobial therapy, further efforts aimed at identifying and controlling the source of infection, ideally within six to 12 hours, should be performed in all patients with sepsis. In addition, for those who fail despite therapy or those who fail having initially responded to therapy, further investigation aimed at removal of devices suspected to be infected. Adequacy of antimicrobial regimen or nosocomial superinfection should be considered. Failure of initial therapy. For patients with sepsis who remain hypotensive despite adequate fluid resuscitation three liter in first three hours, we recommend with the pressors, the preferred initial agent is norepinephrine. For patients who are refractory to intravenous fluid and vasopressor therapy, additional therapies such as glucocorticoids, anotropic therapy, and blood transfusion can be administered on an individual basis. We typically reserve red blood cell transfusion for patients with hemoglobin level less than 7 gram per liter. Patients who respond to therapy. For patients with sepsis who have demonstrated a response to therapy, we suggest that the rate of fluid administration should be reduced or stopped. Visopressor support weaned, and if necessary, diuretics administered. For example, if the patient is overloaded and third space has developed, you know, then diuretics is necessary. We also recommend that antimicrobial therapy be an road once pathogen identification and susceptibility data return. Antimicrobial therapy should be pathogen and susceptibility directed for a total duration of seven to 10 days. Although shorter or longer courses are appropriate for select patients. Pregnancy. A patient is pregnant and she has got uh, sepsis and septic shock. Uh, the optimal way to manage sepsis in pregnancy is unknown, but most experts use the same principle as outlined in this topic being cognizant of the altered hemodynamics of pregnancy. The usual scoring system so far, sir, have excluded pregnant women because pregnancy physiology is different and normal pregnancy parameter overlap with criteria of sepsis, such that some experts have proposed use of pregnancy specific score, which is called um, obstetric early warning score, OES, uh, early warning score, uh, OEWS. Uh, uh, that score has also um, uh, more 24 or 26 parameters. And the, when the score is six or more, the patient is critical and should be admitted in ICU, uh, which is predicted risk of admission to the ICU with score of six or greater. Poor sepsis care. For survivors of sepsis, attention should be paid to follow up care and recognition of post intensive care syndrome. Thank you. Any relevant question, please? <clears throat> Sir, uh, uh, Dr. Salman here, can I ask a question? Yes, yes. Thanks. Sir, uh, uh, does these uh, uh, guidelines discuss anything related to antibiotics? Um, uh, in terms of giving them for prolonged period, uh, for prolonged duration, like for two to three hours, instead of just giving for um, uh, fifteen minutes or thirty minutes, which is the usually we do. Yes, because uh, I have mentioned here, this recommendation was presented uh, here. Uh, uh, beta lactam antibiotics should be given in prolonged infusion, and uh, mm -hmm. after giving a bolus dose. But the remaining antibiotic will be given in uh, according to trans transitional, you know, this uh, uh, doses, uh, uh, intermittent doses like TDS, eight hourly, 12 hourly. Only beta lactam antibiotic should be given in 
prolonged and continuous infusion. The article will be shared, and uh, there are another use. Uh, you know, this uh, uh, the um, uh, the uh, there are uh, some points uh, which are uh, clearing the use of antibiotics uh, according to pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. Uh, um, there are a very beautiful table. I will share the full article. Inshallah, you will see that over there. Okay, sir. Thank you. Any other question, please? Ask a question. Hello. Gigi, sir. Ankur. Speaking. Uh, just a, a question about, uh, I'm wondering what's your... Uh, reading and understanding about the use of uh, steroid yes steroid uh, will be used when you know when, when there Repeat, is no response considering the variation gets in, in considering sir, the, uh, okay. Okay. Sir, please there uh, um, are sorry hello yes sir yes sir can you hear me now gigi gigi sir abhi sun raha gigi I'm just wondering what reading and understanding about the use of steroids and uh, targeted immune therapies because there's a very various, you know, varied uh, variation type of services we are seeing nowadays. Yes, your uh, voice is not clear, but I uh, understood that you are saying about the use of steroids when there is no response to your fluid resuscitation and vasopressor you can use steroids uh, because the uh, majority of patients, you know, with sepsis and uh, septic shock, they are having, you know, adrenal insufficiency. Uh, so when the patient is uh, uh, resuscitated according to the protocols, for example, 30 ml of uh, fluid uh, in the first per kg in the first three hours, and you are giving uh, intermittent policies uh, to keep the urine output 0.5 ml per kg, per hour and the map is 65 or 60 to 70 range. And you have aided the vasopressor, not epinephrine vasopressin, but still the patient map and you know, these uh, uh, organ perfusion requirement is not achieving. You can use steroid, you know, this is recommended in this article. I mentioned briefly, but in the article, it is very detailed. I will share inshallah the articles. Okay. Yes. Yeah, what, what, what's, but what's your, uh, you know, understanding about the use of immune therapies? Because we're seeing a lot of, you know, variation in the uh, genetics and as well as the phenotypes of, of the sepsis. So, uh, you know, uh, about the steroids and immune suppressants, did you have a chance to use them in your ICU or uh, what's, what's yes, your practice? Can, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. We can use steroid, uh, you know, this is, it depends upon the protocol of uh, uh, different uh, intensivists. But according to the protocol, the steroid should be used when you are giving uh, broad spectrum antibiotics and uh, you are covering the anti the uh, organ the infection according to the culture sensitivity, and uh, you are giving the fluid resuscitation properly along with vasopressor. The patient needs, uh, you know, um, uh, the patient is uh, you are not actually able to achieve the map according to the requirement. Uh, so the steroid should be started. All those steroid will cause immunosuppression, but from another side, immunosuppression, uh, this uh, uh, adrenal insufficiency, corticoid deficiency will also uh, will uh, lead the patient in a serious condition. Uh, so from that point of view, it is also important. So there will be merits and demerits. And uh, if you are not achieving the uh, uh, map in uh, urine output in organ perfusion uh, uh, level uh, based on the, your previous management, the steroid is recommended to be started. And hydrocortisone is the steroid of choice. It will be given three, two to 300 in state dose, then 200 in six or eight hourly. But freely steroid should not be used uh, uh, initially when you are uh, uh, starting management uh, uh, in the beginning, you are you are not giving proper fluid. The, the, we are not giving, for example, uh, appropriate uh, vasopressors 
uh, uh, we are giving steroid along with these, which is not recommended. At the end of all these, you are not achieving the, um, the target map, then the steroid is necessary to be given. That's, okay. that's wonderful, Professor. Thank you very much for such a fascinating presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Any other question? Any other relevant question? Thank you.